This is part 2 of Bootstrap Tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to download, set up and create our first Bootstrap web page. To get started with Bootstrap, the first step is to download Bootstrap. To download Bootstrap, navigate to getbootstrap.com. On this website, you can also find all the documentation that is required to get started with Bootstrap. I'm going to click this Download Bootstrap button. Notice there are three variations that are available for the download. We can either download the compiled and minified version or the source code or the SAS version. I've already downloaded the compiled and minified version. With the download, what you get is a single zip folder. I'm going to right click on this, extract the contents. Now let's drill down into the folder and see what we have got. Notice we've got three subfolders, CSS, fonts, and JS. Now let's examine the files that we have got and the purpose of each of them folder by folder. First, let's look at the CSS folder. Notice we've got bootstrap.css. This is the core CSS for Bootstrap, which defines all the styles for various controls and components. And then we have bootstrap.css.map. When debugging the minified code, the line numbers do not refer to the original files. The file that has the .map extension, which is also called as source map file, fixes this problem by allowing the web debuggers to refer to the original context from where the code was generated. This file is useful during development. And then we have bootstrap.min.css. This is the compressed version, meaning all the white spaces, line breaks, and any other extra characters have been removed. As a result, the size of the minified file is smaller than the non-minified file. Minified version is usually used on a production server for efficient download, whereas the non-minified version is used in development environment as it is more readable and easy to debug if there are issues. Now let's see how the minified and non-minified files look like. So I'm going to open them with wordpad. First, let's open the non-minified file. So let's navigate to our CSS folder. And first, let's open the non-minified version. Notice we've got in our white spaces, line breaks, everything. And this file is readable. This is very useful during development because it's easy to debug if there are issues. Now let's look at the minified version. So here we have our minified version, bootstrap.min.css. Notice with the minified version, all the white spaces and line breaks have been stripped out. As a result, the size of the file get reduced and it's obviously going to be efficient um, on a production server because it's going to um, you know, reduce the time it is required to download the file because of its smaller size. And then we have bootstrap.min.css.map. This is the source map file for bootstrap.min.css. And then we have bootstrapteam.css. As the name suggests, this is the theme for Bootstrap. Adding the core bootstrap.css is enough for Bootstrap to work. The theme file is optional and is usually used for a visually enhanced experience. For example, if you want 3D effects, gradients, shadows, etc. And then we have bootstrapteam.css.map. This is the source map file for bootstrapteam.css. And then we have bootstrapteam.min.css, which is the minified version of bootstrapteam.css. And finally, bootstrapteam.min.css.map, which is the source map file for bootstrapteam.min.css. Now, let's look at the files in fonts folder. Notice within fonts folder, we've got five different files. These are the files from glyph icons. These five different files are just different format of the glyph icons font to support different browsers. Now let's look at the files in JS folder. These JavaScript files are optional. These are required if you want to use bootstrap widgets like picture carousel, drop-down menus, collapsible accordion, etc. One important thing to keep in mind is that Bootstrap JavaScript has a dependency on jQuery. So a reference to jQuery must also exist on the page where you want to use Bootstrap. 
bootstrap.js, this is the non-minified readable version that is usually used during development. Bootstrap.min.js, minified version of Bootstrap.js, optimized for faster download. This is the version that is usually used in a production environment. And then finally we have npm.js. npm is a file from Node.js and is useful for npm installing Bootstrap. If you're new to Node.js, don't worry, this is not going to come in the way to understand Bootstrap. For this course, I'm going to use Visual Studio 2013 as the editor, but you can use any editor of your choice. Now, let's look at the steps involved to create our first web page with Bootstrap. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here, I have an empty ASP.NET web application project. The first step is to add folder that contains the three subfolders, fonts, CSS, and JS to the root directory of our web project. So, I'm going to go to the folder and I'm going to change the name of this folder to Bootstrap to keep things simple. And I'm going to copy this folder and paste it within the root directory of our web application project. So that's our first step. And the next step is to add an HTML file. So I'm going to add an HTML file and I'm going to name this index.html. And now I'm going to go back to our getbootstrap.com website. So on this page, you also see a link here which says basic template. Click on that link. And notice here we have a basic HTML template to get started with Bootstrap. So I'm going to copy all this HTML and paste it within our index.html. Now at the moment, Bootstrap will not work and I'll explain why. So we have our index.html and notice here we have an H1 element which says hello world. So what I'm going to do is navigate to our index.html and see how the web page looks like. Now Bootstrap is not in action. And that is because if you look at the links right here, look at this here. We have a link which is pointing to bootstrap.min.css, but it's looking for that file within CSS folder in the root directory of a web project. But then, you know, that CSS folder is actually present in a different folder, which is bootstrap. So we have to change that path to bootstrap. And let's do the same thing for the JavaScript script tag that we have here. And notice here, we are referencing jQuery CDN link as well. And now, notice here, we have viewport tag. So this viewport meta tag ensures proper rendering and touch zooming on a mobile device. So now, you know, we have bootstrap in action. Let's actually prove that. So I'm going to save the changes and I'm going to reload this page. Look at what happened to the font. The font has changed. So now it's using bootstrap defaults. Now I'm going to apply one of the bootstrap CSS classes to this H1 element. So I'm going to set the class attribute and I'm going to set this to text dash primary. Let's save our changes and let's reload the page. Look at that, you know, the text primary CSS class is applied to the H1 element. Let's change this to, for example, text danger and see how it looks like. Look at that, now the color changes. So, so we have wired up everything that is required to use Bootstrap with our web application project. Thank you for listening and have a great day.